Welcome to The Funnel. My name is John Shea, and I'm president of Alignment Group. This is episode number 227 of The Funnel, Five Keys to Finding and Developing High-Performing Salespeople. Before we begin, I want to remind you to head on over to alignment-group.com backslash the funnel and download the best of the funnel and insights. This is the first installment of the series. And we're covering the six-step hiring process. So you get all the blogs that we've written about the process as well as some information on each of the podcasts and a link to that podcast. So it makes it easier. If you want to learn about that process, you can just download the ebook and read the information in the ebook and click the links and it's all right there. Today's agenda. Review yourself. Review past mistakes sales candidate assessment, interview process, and sales development. Now, on a number of podcasts, we've covered some of these things in different forms, maybe a little bit different context, but I'm trying to sort of bring it all together for you and say these five things are going to help you get better. And there's some heavy lifting on some of, some of them, like when we get to four, the interview process, we talk about that six-step process. That takes some work. So look at this as a cliff notes on how you should approach hiring salespeople moving forward. So when I talk about review yourself, I'm, I'm basically saying as the hiring manager, whether you're a sales manager, VP of sales, business owner, whatever your title, but your role is to hire salespeople, take a look in the mirror. Right now, how do you find salespeople? Do you put ads on Craigslist? Do you talk to recruiters? Do you use something like Indeed or Monster? Or maybe it's another service or trade magazines or LinkedIn. There's a thousand ways to find salespeople. How do you do it now? And do you think it's working? How do you know it's working? If you have high turnover or people don't make it past a year or two years, you're not getting your return on your investment or that person that looked great that didn't turn out so great. Maybe it's time to look at yourself. Look at where you're finding your reps. Is my interview process, do I have, do I have that honed down? And, and here's the problem with the interview process versus managing or coaching or the interview process versus selling. It's not something you do every day, all day. When you're in sales and you're selling, well, you're doing that every day, all day. You're out there selling people your product or service in some form or fashion. When you're a manager and you're, and you're, you're spending your life coaching salespeople, you're doing it every day. It's second nature to you. There's plenty of time to hone that skill. Maybe if you're lucky, you're interviewing one, two, three reps a year, or hiring one or two or three reps a year, maybe even less than that. So you're not putting enough time into it. Or maybe you're just not developed enough in that process. So it might require you to look at that process and really look at it, tear it apart, say, these are the steps of how I interview somebody. Do I talk too much? We're all in sales, and business owners, whether you like it or not, whether, you know, and I have a lot of marketing agency friends, people in marketing agencies, you are in sales, you're selling, you're an entrepreneur. We all like to hear ourselves talk. Do you lead the witness? This is what I tell people all the time. I'll never forget working with one of my clients, and I think it was his name. I know his name is Kenny. And when I was talking about leading the witness, the light bulb went on for him. We were on a video call, and you could just see he's like, I do that all the time. And he had no, uh, no one had ever said to him, this is what happens. You're basically giving them the answer to the question through your question or maybe your setup to your question or your conversation. So am I talking? It's the basic stuff about yourself. Do I really have an interview process? Am I looking in the right place to find salespeople and I'm really focusing on that? Do I talk way too much in the interview? Do I lead the witness on? Because I should be the one talking the least amount in an interview. These are just a few things. But take stock in yourself and ask yourself, do I put forth the full effort? 
You see, oftentimes when, inter- when it comes to interviewing or finding sales reps, managers think the work is really done once they're hired. It's the coaching and the onboarding, the development, the, the, the performance. But I will tell you this. If you do your job right and you really think about it, it's finding the right people. So I can use all the sports analogies I want. A good team knows how to find the good players and put them in place to succeed. And that's what we're talking about here. So take stock in yourself as a manager. Review past mistakes. Well, you might say, well, that's part of taking stock in myself. Yes, it could be. What I'm talking about is we have a tendency when we lose somebody or somebody doesn't meet our expectations and we, we fire them or they quit, we tend to look outward and say, well, they didn't work out. They lied to me on the interview. They were a good interviewer, but they really didn't perform in the field. They didn't work that hard. They didn't have the work ethic. They didn't try. We gave them all the tools. We supported them. every. It's them, and we're pointing the finger. Maybe. They have to take responsibility for their actions. I'm not saying they don't. But I'd start pointing through the resumes. Look for common themes. Is there something in there that I'm missing? Maybe I'm not reviewing the resumes right, and we go through that in the hiring process. How to go through that with a time uh, fine tooth comb. Go through the applications. What's written in their applications? That may be a red flag for me. I, I, I'm not saying you're going to find the key in an application or a resume, but something might click for you. I know folks in specific industries that only look for industry experience. And I can tell you, I was quite the opposite in the industry I came out of. I didn't want somebody else's baggage. We could train somebody to do what we do. Now, there are specialty fields, and I'm not going to say that that doesn't happen. But do you really need someone from your industry? Maybe that's it. Maybe there's a common theme there. They've all come out of the industry. They've all come from the same company. And maybe they're taught to say things a certain way. Look at their performance and your performance. Where did it start well? Where did it, did it go off the rails? What happened? Go back and look at the data and go over the timeline. When did this start to occur? And if it's, look, if you're hiring people on six to eight months later, 12 months later, you're letting them go. I'd say you're, you're definitely hiring the, the wrong people. So it's more about you. But sometimes it could be something that's triggered. For example, maybe that is the first six months and you've got some onboarding issues. Maybe it's the second year, the third year, the fourth. I, I know that when we were hiring people, first year was always the rough part, but we felt like if we could get them to two, we'd have them for five. And then at five, that's when things changed. Now, in our business, we were hiring mostly college graduates. And we had people that had been with the company for 20, 30 years. So we had a vast group of experienced people. And for specific product lines or sales, we would hire someone with more sales experience. But as the majority of new people coming into the company were right out of college, at year five, that's when they started thinking like, hey, what do I want to do beyond this? Where's my career going? What I'm making really good money now. What does that mean for me in terms of my life and my career and my goals, et cetera, et cetera? We knew that. Maybe you can find that out. Where are the problems? Maybe after the first two years, you're paying less attention to them. You're, they're getting less coaching. I, whatever it is, start peeling back the layers on their timeline, and benchmark it against other folks. Maybe you'll find some common themes. I'd also do a little bit of where are they now. Maybe they're out of sales. Maybe they're highly successful in other companies, in other industries. What is that going to tell you? Maybe they weren't right for what you do. Let's start looking at who you're looking for. You know, with our assessment, we spend a lot of time figuring out who you're looking for. Try to narrow that down. These are things you can do to help you find the right people. Sales candidate assessment, of course. I'm going to put that in there, right? I've used an assessment from the beginning of my sales management career. I've been hired at companies that have used the assessment. Different assessments. I'm using the assessment as an objective point of view. So first I'm deciding what it is that I want. 
I'm putting a really good job description together. That's part of my hiring class, right? I teach people how to put that. That's more for you to know what they're supposed to do. Exactly what is their day-to-day job. Put it in writing, in details. That's going to help you understand what it is you're looking for. Then we begin to look at the assessment and cutting out the profile there. What kind of fit do we have here? What are we looking for? I always say personality. Why? They have to fit the culture of your company. They have to be the kind of person you're looking for. You'll know it when you talk to them. That's part of the interview process, right? We're not looking for the personality and the assessment. We're looking for that in the interview process. And I put a question mark on it on the video here because I don't want people to think I'm talking about a personality assessment because I'm not. We do not assess for personality. Why? Because we're looking for sales fit. We're looking for it in the context of who you are as a salesperson, not as a person. But the personality side comes in the interview. So the assessment is about fit. It's about skills. It's about DNA. What's the objective here? What are we looking for? We're going we're gonna to look at all of that and determine if they fit our job. That's objective. Personality is subjective. Can I get along with this person? Can I manage them? Would I like to manage them and work with them? I'm looking for sales fit in the context of what I'm doing. Because if I like somebody and I'm, hey, I can work with them. I can, they're great. This is fine. And they don't fit on the assessment. What's the point? They can't do the job. You see how that can be a problem if you don't have an assessment? You get into an interview. You lead the witness. You talk a lot. Maybe you don't know how to dig deep into the resume. But you have a decent interview, decent conversation. I like this person. They have good pedigree. Their historical success has been high. I'm going to hire them. That's not good. The assessment allows you to benchmark against that. Before you even get to the interview, before you even talk to them as a person, you'll know if they're a fit or not. And if they're not, you won't interview them. The assessment is key in this whole process. Reviewing yourself, looking at past mistakes, looking at the interview process, all those things, sales candidate assessment. And for us, it's on the front end. We're doing that. If we see somebody, the resume matches, the application matches, okay, they look like they could potentially be a fit for us, we're going to assess them. And then when the assessment comes back, we're going to decide whether to take the next step of the through the interview process. We're not going to wait till we get through the interview to assess somebody. So let's talk about that interview process. <clears throat> I just went back you know, three steps and told you, hey, look at yourself. Look at what you're doing. You need a rigorous interview process. A standard for interviewing. A strong standard for interview. A guide that's in place, not only for you as a business owner or manager, but for every manager in the place that's hiring salespeople. So you're all on the same page. Why do you need a process? Well, you need a sales process. Again, I go back to you're not interviewing every day. It's not what you do all day. It's part of the job. It's a small piece of the job, but is one of the most important pieces of the job. So a rigorous process, a guide with training, maybe a little bit of role playing for the managers in meetings. Take a little personal time to do that or professional time. Come in early in the morning. Maybe buy your fellow manager breakfast and say, hey, listen, can we role play some interviews here. I need some help. I want to make sure I get this right. Or with your boss or anybody, another manager in the company. You want to get that interview technique down and again, you don't want to talk too much. You want to stay on point. A strong interview process is going to do that for you. So go back and review yourself. Do you have an interview process? If you don't, then you want to implement that. Do I have a sales assessment? Have I looked at why this keeps happening so I can resolve that as well. Why does this keep happening to the company? Why do we keep losing people? Is there something I'm doing wrong here? And how can I make that better? Next, we're talking about sales development. It's like links in a chain. They all go together. So I have to figure out 
where to find good people, and it could be any number of places, and I would recommend that you use multiple sources for salespeople instead of one. So if you're using an agency, an employment agency, that's fine. But I would definitely reach out through LinkedIn. I'd reach out through peers. There's any number of ways you can do that, like a referral program, okay? That's important, finding the right people, then assessing them, then a really strong interview process, then putting them in place. Then why would you go through all that and say, sink or swim, here you go. When I first started, it was a three-ring binder with all kinds of information on what we sold, and this is how you cold call, good luck. I made a fool out of myself. I didn't know what I was doing. Put on top of that, I didn't even know how the company run. I didn't know anything about the internal workings of the company or who I should talk to. They didn't seem to care. That's how it was done. And there was a lot of sink or swim. A lot of it. Watched a lot of people leave before me. And eventually I found another job and the same thing occurred. I started thinking about it myself. This, this makes no sense to me. People want to know what the plan is. What's the plan? How am I going to get from A to B? And why would you invest all that time and money in hiring somebody and say, well, they know how to sell. Let them go sell. It doesn't work that way. Do the research. The stats will tell you. A good onboarding program is going to solve a lot of problems for you. It's going to get them up and running faster. They're going to sell more in a shorter amount of time. Why wouldn't you want to do that? Because it takes work. I know that. It's hard. It's a pain in the neck. But once you get it up and running, then it's about fine-tuning and tweaking. Then I always say, teamwork makes the dream work. Because you should be bringing in other folks to do that and helping you on the onboarding. And then it's the sales development part. Everybody needs development. I've said that a thousand times. Now think about this. What kind of industry doesn't have ongoing education for their, for, for their people, okay? If you want to sell mortgages for a living, you have to take an exam. That is rigorous. It is difficult. And then the laws are constantly getting updated, so you have to get updated and certified. Teachers, once you're certified, you're certified. But they have ongoing training and development. Doctors, lawyers, accountants, engineers, you name it. Hey, the person... The sitting behind the cash register at the grocery store needs to learn the new system. Everybody, everybody has an ongoing education. For some reason, our industry says we don't need it. And, and I don't mean there's tons of sales training and development out there. There are salespeople say, why don't they just leave me alone? Let me sell. This is what I do. What? Your products change. Your company evolves. The good companies stay in, in business for a very long time. The companies that don't change go out of business. Just look at Encyclopedia Britannica. Okay? You might say, well, you're kind of off course. I'm not off course. What I'm saying is the, the, the links to the chain are simple. Finding good people, making sure that you review what you're doing and get better, getting better at it, put a quality assessment in place, build out a strong hiring process, then once you get them on board, onboard them and then develop them and continue to develop them to get that return on investment. People don't stay at companies forever anymore, but they should pay back what you've invested in them. And if they don't, there's something wrong. There's something wrong with what's happening in your company. Or maybe you. Subscribe to the funnel, alignment-group.com backslash the funnel. You can find us on Facebook. I'm on Twitter at John R and LinkedIn. You can contact me, J Shea, at alignment-group.com. And of course, our website, alignment-group.com. Again, thank you for subscribing. And until next time, keep going the phone.